I bought this thing used, and for my trouble, I got a bent PCIe bracket. Thanks, UPS. Long time no see. I haven't made a video in years. I'm in a new house, new state, new car. Not that I can drive it at the moment. But what hasn't changed is my downstairs PC. I built it inside an old broken Xbox in 2019. And, wow, 2019, that was a long time ago, wasn't it? How things have changed since 2019. Actually, not much has changed if you're looking exclusively at low-profile cards. The 1650 is still... This one, the 1650, is still the only low-profile GeForce card you can buy. AMD has the 6400, which is newer, but about the same in terms of performance. But there was some controversy and weirdness around the PCI lanes of that card. So I kind of wanted to stay away from it, honestly. But we have a potential savior from NVIDIA's professional Quadro lineup comes the RTX A2000. It's on a newer architecture, but still only needs 75 watts from the PCIe slot. The only problem is that the MSRP is over $600. You can go on eBay right now and buy a 3080 for $600, and a 3080 is going to stomp all over this baby little 75 watt Quadro. So why do you need a weird little baby card like this instead of getting a used 3080 for the same price? Well, here's the problem. I have <laughs> a very tiny computer that was built poorly and with no skill. And say we grab an old Founders Edition 1080. Oh, would you look at that? The card is actually longer than the entire case that it's supposed to fit in. So that's not going to work. But there is an argument to be made about power efficiency, where this 1080, off the top of my head, what is it, like 200 watts that it uses? Uh, yeah, single 8 pin. This only needs 75. So I've got these PCI uh, cables from the from the power supply, and I don't even need them. Not that it would fit anyway. But I mean, there is an energy crisis going on at the moment. The UK, my my family's power bills have doubled, tripled in some cases. So having a low power solution is actually quite useful. Despite professional branding, this is more than capable of running games, including advanced features like DLSS and ray tracing. It's about, according to what I've read online, it's about equivalent in power to a 3050, which makes it slightly weaker than this 1080 from seven years ago. But hopefully that means it will outperform the existing 1650 quite handily. Installing it is so simple, it's barely even worth <laughs> filming. Let's install it. Okay, we're done. <laughs> that was easy. This computer uses the famous Ryzen 5 1600 AF, which launched at $85 and then became extremely difficult to find after Gamers Nexus published a video and an article telling half a million people to buy one. <laughs> but I managed to get one and I put it in here. I don't think, it is a pretty weak CPU by today's standards, but I don't think it's going to bottleneck these weak GPUs. I've already recorded performance numbers for the 1650, so let's go and compare them, I suppose. Plague Tale Requiem is a funny one, because it's actually locked to 30 on current gen consoles. Not on either of these GPUs, though. That being said, I expect the PS5 version isn't using the lowest possible settings and DRS on performance mode. Still, that's a heck of an improvement. Plenty of headroom for higher settings. Note that DLSS is turned off, so by turning that on, you would improve the look of the game while preserving the good performance. Very strangely though, the 1650 has some sort of broken texture or transparency on some of the foliage, which the A2000 has no problem with. Halo is another game that goes from unpleasant to totally playable. Sub-60 in this game is really nasty, but the A2000 cleans it up nicely with a minimum of 78 FPS during this Rockets and Repulsors game with constant explosions going off. Another strange thing with the 1650, actually, on the main menu, objects seem to be flickering between different levels of detail. Again, no problem with the A2000, this is just a 1650 problem. I've actually been playing a lot of Spider-Man on the old 1650, mixed with some Steam Deck while travelling, and I've been satisfied with it at 1080p with FSR, 
but since this new GPU supports extra features that the 1650 doesn't, we can't really compare them directly. For example, Spider-Man benefits greatly from ray trace reflections, given that it takes place in a city full of glass. And since RT is so demanding, upscaling technology is usually required to get good frame rates. Native 1080p, with RT on, the A2000 runs between 40 and 60 FPS, but with DLSS in balanced mode, that can boost to... between 40 and 60 FPS. GP utilization isn't nearly high enough, so that really doesn't seem right. My main desktop does it too, for what it's worth. It might be a bug with hyperthreading, according to the forums, but as you can see, 73% GPU usage here as well. I don't really want to turn off hyperthreading. It really does feel like the 1600 AF is bottlenecking even these weak GPUs. So I bought a CPU upgrade. This is becoming quite an expensive video. Uh, I bought a Ryzen 5600, uh, basically because it was the most economical option. And I've also got a very small cooler in here, as you can see. So. I didn't want to go super overboard. What I'm gonna do now is try and remember how on earth to take the knock to a cooler off. Ugh, that's the CPU power cable. Oh, I didn't use thermal paste. I used a thermal grizzly pad. I completely forgot about that. Well, it's held up, as you can see. I even brought more thermal paste down from my stash. Well, I kind of want to reuse the pad. Let's see if I can. Yeah, when I put these on, I used, uh, it's a sheet of aluminium, and I just used uh, punch, what are they called? Punch standoffs? And I only got three of the four in the right place. <laughs> just like the motherboard's only held in with three screws. Okay, back to the TV. As you can see, performance has dramatically improved, as has the GPU utilization. Swinging through Times Square or fighting bad guys is now at or above 60 FPS, even with RT on. If I turn VSync on, suddenly we're looking at an almost perfect 60. I could actually get there by swapping DLSS from balance to performance, so there's even overhead. This is a fantastic result. The 5600, incidentally, came with Uncharted for free, so I guess we'll try that too? Why not? Uncharted doesn't show nearly as big of a jump in performance as the others, going from about 30 to about 45 FPS. Though that might change later on. I specifically chose not to use an action scene, because when I started the game for the first time, I got a funny animation bug, so I decided to use this cutscene to benchmark instead. Portal RTX is NVIDIA's latest flex, and boy is it tough to run. The recommended spec for the original just says any DX9 compatible GPU, but for the RTX lighting, the recommendation goes up to a gosh darn 3080, hence why everyone on Steam is giving it negative reviews when they can't run it. This game is a nightmare to record, and doesn't support any FPS counters except NVIDIA's built-in ones. I ended up using a capture card, so we're limited to 1080p30 because my capture card is ancient. Not that that matters because this card can barely go above 30 anyway. This is high settings with DLSS on performance. 30 FPS is totally playable and in my opinion it looks lovely. This game gives you an amazing amount of control, even over things normally locked to end users. Here's what it looks like with no denoising. Because rays are so demanding to simulate, GPUs can only trace the paths of a relatively low number of them. Denoising is how the lighting is smoothed out and turned into something palatable, turning this mess that's probably being absolutely destroyed by a YouTube compression into beautiful lighting. Not all RT games are ultra demanding or have weird hyperthreading bugs. Raji and Ancient Epic is, in my opinion, an underrated indie game based on Hindu mythology. I enjoyed it a lot when I first played it, but since then, ray traced reflections and a few other effects have been added, and they significantly improved the visuals. 
Look at how the details of Raji's dress are reflected in this opening scene with RT on and off. We're getting well over 60 FPS at native 1080p too, so if you turn VSync on it would pretty much be flawless. The last thing on the list is to check power use. In the same scene, so this is with the 1600 AF, not the 5600, so nothing else has been changed, the 1650's total system power is just over 140 watts, while the A2000 only needs an extra 12 watts, bringing it to 155 watts total. 155 watts for 60 FPS in Plague Tale means this thing might be more power efficient than the PS5. Good to know in an energy crisis, even if the Steam Deck can do 30 FPS for 35 watts. Well there we go, my venerable Xbox PC has once again earned its place under my TV. And I don't know, this is going off script, uh, these last six months have been very difficult for me. I got a divorce, I moved across the country alone in a trailer that I packed myself and had to move around myself. I lost my grandmother, uh, I had to fly back to the UK and everything's just difficult. And I have a good job, I'm glad for that. And I do these videos for fun. I was hoping to finish this one and get back into video making as a hobby to cheer myself up. But I don't know, we'll see how this goes. We'll see if I even finish this. If you're watching this, thank you. Because that means A, I finished it. B, you watched all the way to the end. So thumbs up for that from me. Uh, I guess my closing comments are um, this thing, the RTX A2000, is not worth the MSRP. Oh, another thing to mention, uh, there are two versions with different amounts of VRAM. This is the cheaper one. I may have put the picture of the 12 gig VRAM one earlier in the video, but don't worry about that. Semantics. It's not worth the MSRP. If you can find it used, like I did, for about 200 bucks, absolutely worthwhile. Uh, if you're building a stupid PC like this. It's uh, way more powerful than it looks and it, and it stays cool even though it's a tiny little blower, tiny little blower fan on it. My only complaint is the fan's a bit annoying, but once you put the case on you can't hear the fan, so all good as far as I'm concerned. And in fact, let's bring the old 1080 out. What's this? This is a blower as well, so it's not like it's uncommon. And that uses a heck of a lot more power than the uh, A2000. So yeah, uh, I guess I'll see you next time.